Now I want to show you what they are allowing be in these government meetings. Well, I didn't ask to be there. Hey, real quick, you can check out my Christian apparel brand, my favorite Bibles, commentaries, books, all linked in the description below. Howdy, y'all. I'm Brylan. Now, if you watch my channel regularly, you would know that one of my most recent videos is called Famous Pastor Just Did This in Congress. This was a video showing Jack Hibbs praying before Congress and praying a very powerful, truth-filled prayer. And you could feel the truth burning into the hearts of all those evil, wicked people in our government. In this video, I want to show you the response from progressive liberals and Democrats within our government. So these are officials in our government that have shown how much they absolutely hate God. And they have gone on the attack and they are now attacking Jack Hibbs. I'm going to show you how they're attacking Jack Hibbs. And not only that, I'm going to show you Jack Hibbs' reaction to being attacked. And then I'm going to show you what they are allowing to happen before these government meetings. And it should shock you. But like clockwork, here we go. Check this out. The irony is so thick, it'll blow you away. Hey, real quick, hit that thumbs up button. You know when you like this video to get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. Free thought Democrats object to Pastor Jack Hibbs as guest chaplain, says he's a Christian nationalist. What a loaded term that is. You know, I've talked about in previous videos about how Christian nationalist is just a code word now. What liberals have done is they've taken this Christian nationalist title and they've applied it to anybody that, well, is a Christian and that wants to follow biblical teaching. Are you getting it yet? If you follow the word of God, if you are a Christian, then you are going to be considered a Christian nationalist. And with that comes, well, what the liberals and Democrats have termed to be worse than 9-11, which is J6. You're worse than literal terror organizations. Take it with a badge of honor. If you love the word of God and you desire to follow the word of God and think society would be better if we obeyed God. I want you to check out what the Democrats are accusing uh, Jack Hibbs of the fact that he would dare pray before Congress. How dare Mike Johnson allow Jack Hibbs pray a faithful prayer before God? Members of the Congressional Free Thought Caucus, a group which advocates for separation of church and state, and other House Democrats are speaking out against Speaker Mike Johnson's sponsorship of controversial pastor as a guest chaplain and accusing Johnson of importing a radical brand of Christian faith into the House. <laughs> okay, so I want you to understand something. Of course, they're going to call it radical because Jack Hibbs was very faithful and truthful in his prayer. The world hates that. Jesus said that you're going to be hated because I'm hated. Now, I just want you to remember that all of this is coming from what's called the Congressional Free Thought Caucus. Okay, so you have a Congressional Free Thought Caucus that, well, doesn't actually believe in free thought. Unless you think exactly the way that they think you should think, then that's free thought. But if you think outside of the way that they think, and you think in terms of biblical morality, and you think in a way that honors God, oh, well, that, that, that kind of thinking is going to cost you something. It's, they want it to cost your freedom. They want it to cost your life. They want it to cost you everything. Because you weren't a part of the free thought, which is free in, unless you're a Christian. But the whole point of this caucus is to promote public policy formed on the basis of reason, science, and moral values. You couldn't get further from the truth. But I want you to check this out too. Such an absolute lie. One of the biggest lies. Check this out. To protect the secular character of our government by adhering to the strict constitutional principle of the separation of church and state. Now this is the man, Rep. Huffman. A, a radical Democrat from California that is proposing that 
Jack Hibbs is a Christian nationalist. Mike Johnson is a Christian nationalist. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian nationalist. But this man, a radical leftist who absolutely hates this country so much that he wants to destroy it from the inside. I thought one of our founding fathers warned us about that. Um, no, probably not. But this man pushes the, th the, the thought that separation of church and state, it's in the Constitution. Even though you will not find separation of church and state in the Constitution anywhere, it is not a constitutional idea. And in fact, you didn't see it until Thomas Jefferson actually brought it up in a letter afterward, where the whole point of Thomas Jefferson's letter talking about the separation of church and state was to protect the church from the state, not to protect the state from the church. The whole point is that there should not be any governmental overreach within the church. The government should not be able to come into the church and tell them what to do, what to think, how to run, kind of like what you saw during co in 2020. You saw the government step in and say, you are not allowed to be open anymore. You are not allowed to worship. You must obey us over God. That's the whole point of separation of church and state is that the church is protected from the government. However, it's people like this, Rep Huffman and most of the Democrats. And honestly, a lot of Republicans have fallen for this. Most Christians have fallen for the lie that separation of church and state is actually meant to protect the state and protect everybody from Christianity, essentially. I want to look at a few parts of this letter here, and then I want to show you Jack Hibb's reaction to all of this and, and Jack Hibb's reaction to being accused of all these things that the Democrats have just accused him of for praying a faithful prayer before Congress. And then I'm going to show you what they're actually allowing in uh, these government meetings that will blow you away. But I want you to see kind of how they end this letter here. Check this out. At, towards the end, it says, the decision by the Speaker of House Chaplain to welcome Pastor Hibbs is especially galling in light of the chaplaincy's refusal to allow some signers of this letter to sponsor guest chaplains who meet all the stated expectations of the program. We should all be able to agree that the guest chaplain program should not be used as a political tool nor should it be implemented in a way that favors one religion over others or applies inappropriate religious tests. Basically, what they're saying here is that a true Bible-believing Christian should not be allowed to be the guest chaplain and that it should be somebody else, somebody more inclusive, basically any other religion. Now, make no mistake, this is not the religious versus the non-religious and Christianity versus atheists. Everybody follows a God. You either follow the one true God of the universe, the creator of all things, or you follow the God of this world, Satan. It is one or the other. You are not saying, I don't believe in God and therefore I am free from religion. No, your religion is very much alive. Your false beliefs are very much alive. And that is exactly what they are trying to force on everybody. You must obey the, these new progressive liberal thoughts. You must obey, otherwise you are a phobic whatever. You must obey, otherwise you will lose everything. You must obey, otherwise you will be punished. That's a religious cult. I'm going to show you a video of Jack Hibbs uh, reacting to this attack by the Democrats, but here's Jack Hibbs' response to the letter. I was honored by the nearly 26 congressional members of the Democratic Party who confirmed that my prayer in Congress really was directed to the Almighty God. Again, they're going to do this to anybody that tries to stand on truth. They will come after you. They want to attack you. They want to destroy you. Now here's Jack Hibbs reacting to being asked to pray. Well, I didn't ask to be there, right? The government asked me to come and pray. So it just goes, you know, it goes with the days of deception where people will express their worldview without God and they expect you to roll over and play dead. But if you know history, if you know your Bible, and if you certainly know what is referred to as American exceptionalism, is that this nation was founded like no other. Yeah. And so when you know those things, then you stand firm in that because it's true. And um, I just refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be 
uh, cancel. Good. We should all refuse. Every Christian should refuse to be intimidated, should refuse to be canceled for believing the truth and sharing the truth. We should absolutely 100% continue to stand on truth, spread the truth of God's word, and be unashamed of it. But unfortunately, the world has told the Christians what they should and can believe. And in a lot of instances, the Christian, the church, has fallen for it. The world says that Christians should stay out of politics. And the church says, okay. The world says that the Christian can't use right biblical judgment to discern good from evil. And the church said, okay. The world said that the Bible isn't inclusive enough. And the church, in a lot of instances, sadly said, okay. And now you have many, many churches maybe even a majority of churches now, sadly, that don't use the Bible. They don't teach the Bible word for word. They don't go through the scripture. Instead, it's a self-help sermon. They use man-made logic, man-made wisdom, which isn't true wisdom, isn't true logic at all. There is only one source of true wisdom, and that is through the Word of God. That is through the leading of the Holy Spirit teaching us through His Word. Now I want to show you what they are allowing in these government meetings. What they are saying is okay. This is a government meeting in Washoe County. Look what they allowed. In the name of the eternal rebel against tyrannical authority, in the spirit of your nature of the natural world, the freedoms of thought and expression. All right, you can see these people back here obviously reacting like, what is going on right now? Because you have a member of the satanic church giving a satanic prayer as the invocation before the county meeting. This is what is considered okay. This is considered by our government officials to be inclusive. This is okay because it's not the true God of the Bible. It's not Christianity. And then do you remember that Navy vet who toppled the satanic display? Well, he was slapped with a hate crime charge, uh, a felony. This man is getting a felony while illegals in our country can beat up cops and completely get away with it scot-free, released within not even released within hours, no bail, no nothing. Well, this man topples a satanic display that Iowa allowed to be in their capital, and he gets hit with a felony hate crime. Don't you see how everything is backwards now? Christian bad and should not be allowed anywhere in the government. Satan and satanic displays good and it should be allowed in the government and they try to justify getting rid of christianity as well it's separation of church and state all the while inviting satan inviting demonic wicked evil things into the government sphere under the guise of it not being religious but we still have hope because check out what 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 4 says. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. We do not need to fear these people. We do not need to shy away and hide ourselves away. We must continue to shine the light of truth to a fallen, darkened world. Verse 5, they are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. We know that this attack on Jack Hibbs and this attack on Christianity is the spirit of error. We know this. If you have the Holy Spirit residing in you, if you are a born-again believer, you know that this is the spirit of error. This is a satanic attack. And we must know that he who is in us as born-again believers is greater than he who is in the world. But hey, let me know your thoughts about all this in the comment section below. I would love to hear from you. And please, Hit that subscribe button. Join this community. I would love to hear from you regularly. And if you wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up button, you know when you like this video, it'll get pushed out to more people and it would really help spread the truth. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.